So let's look at the second page. Um, and in this problem, number three, it says find the inverse function of f of x equals root x minus seven, give the domain and range of f inverse. So most people can find the inverse fine, but we're not doing the right things with domain and range. So if we look at the original, uh, I'm gonna write it as y equals x minus seven underneath the root. Uh, the domain most people are comfortable with, x has to be seven or bigger. And the range, most people were okay with, the y has to be positive. Okay, so for inverses, we switch the x and the y. So x equals root y minus 7, and then we can isolate. So x squared equals y minus 7, x squared plus 7 equals y, and this is our inverse function. Now really, I created the y. There's no y originally given and it says give f inverse, so I'm gonna just write f inverse x equals x squared plus seven. So here's my inverse. Okay, now uh, domain and range is what confused people because they were basing domain and range just on what this looks like, but remember we were restricted earlier. And to get an inverse, you switch x's and y's. So x greater than seven now turns into y is greater than or equal to seven y is greater than or equal to zero turns into x is greater than or equal to zero in my inverse. And since the x's determine my domain, there's the domain of my inverse, and here's the range of my inverse. All right, so I'll put here four f inverse, just to distinguish from these, which are four f. Um, in number four, we have this strange looking function with an absolute value and a couple of x plus ones in there. And it says there's a removable discontinuity, give the coordinates. Well, remember, a removable discontinuity in one of these types of rational functions is the ones where you can essentially cancel them out, right? Let's, let's even list the domain here, even though you didn't have to. So the domain, we know from the bottom, the denominator, x can't be negative one, and the other one that it couldn't be is two-thirds, because if you plug in two-thirds right there, you're going to get zero. Um, so, so here's my domain, and the one that cancels is the one that goes with the negative one. So x equals negative one is where the discontinuity is. So let's look at that function. And... Uh, some people tried to then plug in negative one to figure out what the coordinates of the discontinuity would be, the, the whole. But uh, you can't plug it into the original function because it's not in the domain. But this graph right here is the same graph as what's left after you cancel, just without the whole now. So, so if you plug into this modified function, you can figure out where that hole is located. So I'm going to plug in negative one into this function. So I'm going to get 4 times negative 1 divided by negative 3 times negative 1 plus 2. And that's going to come out to absolute value of negative 4, which is 4, over 3 plus 2, which is 5. So that's going to be the y value of where that hole is. So the coordinate is going to be negative 1 comma, whoops, positive 4.5, or 4 over 5. Uh, the next one says, give all equations for horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Well, the ones that don't cancel in the denominator give us the vertical asymptotes. So again, you know, 3x plus 2 can't be 0, so when it is 0, that's where we get something messed up with the graph. And so if I solve this, we get 2 thirds equals x. So that's the vertical asymptote. The horizontal one's a little bit trickier. That's where you want to look at the end behavior model. Right? And the end behavior model, if I look at the dominant terms on top, I've got an absolute value of 4x and then another x term. And on the bottom, I have negative 3x and then another x term. So if I simplify this, because you're allowed to do that with the end behavior models, these cancel and I'm left with 4x over negative 3x where the 4x is in absolute values. Some people just got rid of the absolute values, but you should analyze this a little bit. As x gets really big, whoops, not 8, infinity. As x gets really big, 
Think about what happens to this end behavior model, right? I'm going to plug in a really big number here and the same really big number there, and they're both positive. So on top, I'm going to get four times a positive number, which is still positive, and I, I can take it out of the absolute values. Those don't matter then. Over negative three times the same big positive number. So that's going to turn into four over negative three. Another way of writing that, limit as x goes to infinity of, uh, we'll write, uh, actually I can write f of x here because it follows the same idea. That's going to be negative 4 thirds. But what happens when I plug in x going to negative infinity? Numbers really negative. So if I plug that in, the top is still going to be positive because it's inside absolute values. But the bottom is going to be a negative 3 times a really negative number, which now makes this positive 2. So now I've got a positive number over a positive number. So when I do that, I'm, and the x's will then cancel, I'm going to get 4 over 3, positive 4 over 3. So the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x, uh, not infinity, negative infinity, is going to be positive 4 over 3. So I get two different asymptotes here. I get a horizontal asymptote of y equals negative 4 thirds, and I get a horizontal asymptote of y equals 4 thirds.